Hi everyone, it's me, Coral. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got my August book haul for you. The first one I have this month is Dare Mighty Things by Heather Kaczynski. This is a young adult, I don't know if it's gonna be like hard science fiction, but I know that the, the kids in this book are competing to do something in space. I'm not 100% sure. Even after reading the, uh, the flap on the dust jacket, not like entirely sure like what the objective is for this competition. I don't know, but I've heard some really great things about this book. I really like, um, books about space exploration. I really like movies about space exploration, which reminds me, if you guys have any recommendations for horror books that are like set in space or involve space exploration, like kind of something in the vein of like something that I would like if I like movies like, um, the Europa Report or Gravity or what else? I don't know. Books about space horror. If you have any recommendations for that, let me know because that's something I'm, I don't, um, when I like Google that, not much comes up. So let me know. This is Dare Mighty Things. It definitely is not a horror book, but I hope I like it. The next one is the Wolves of Kala by Stephen King. This is the fifth book in the Dark Tower series. I figured I might as well buy it because I'm in the process of reading that. And this is a doozy. This seems like it's over 700 pages long. That's crazy. Um, I just recently read book three. So we'll be on to book four soon. And then after book four, there's book five. Another space book this month is The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. This is what I've looked forward to for a long time, like since it came out. This is like um, kind of a YA space thriller. There's a girl named Rami and she is the only person left on her like space shuttle spaceship yeah a spaceship her parents have died tragically apparently and now there is another spaceship meeting up with hers but she gets a feeling that maybe the person in the other spaceship isn't being really honest with why they are meeting up with her ship i've heard really good things about this one as well and like i said i'm hoping that this is like it fits into my danger in space thing that I like. We'll see. Next I have The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This is her most recent book. It just came out. I plan on reading this this month. I didn't read the synopsis. I don't want to because I like really want to go into this just like fresh, ignorant, naive about like what's going to happen here. I know that this is kind of like a retelling, a hot take on the turn of the key. <laughs> the turn of the screw is what I meant. So I think it has to do with maybe a woman who's a nanny. Um, I don't know. I've heard people talk about it. I could be totally wrong, but I don't want to double check and see. So I'm going to see it. I'm going to see in September what this is about. Okay, next I have the three things that came in the August Nightworms package. I will leave a little clickety-clack up above if you want to watch the full unboxing for that. I'm not going to go through the synopsis right here, but I read the back of the book in my unwrapping video, my unboxing video, if you care to hear that. But the first one here is Fat Camp by James Sabata. We also got The Toll by Sherry Priest, which is one of my most anticipated books of the summer. I need to read that soon. 
and an issue of Shock Totem magazine. I was so confused about what this was when I <laughs> unboxed it. I was like, oh, it's a weird collection of different sorts of things. Like for some reason, despite having some other horror magazines, like my brain just like could not comprehend that this is what this was. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. Next, I'm so excited about this one. This is the second volume of Lock and Key. I'm so excited. I finally found a used copy of this. It's in, I mean, it's basically new. Like, oh my God, what is this? <laughs> I love, okay, one thing I really love about used books is finding little strange things inside of them. This is a note. It says, have an awesome first day at work. You're going to be great. And it has a little Homer Simpson drawing on it. That's adorable. It's going in my collection of other shit I found in books. Anyways, I've read the first volume. Obviously, I have not progressed beyond that because this is like 20 bucks on Amazon for a copy. And so I found a used copy, like I was saying. The first volume was so, so good. I don't know what this is going to be about, obviously. It's the second book in a series. But the first one's about these three siblings and they they move to a house that their dad grew up in and he had strange stories about um unlocking doors and and things happening when he would walk through these doors and stuff like that things that he could unlock in the house and um the kids find out that maybe they weren't really maybe they weren't just stories so i'm really super excited about where this is going to go i'm reading that asap okay so on to the vintage horror so the first one here is little brothers by rick hautala uh he also wrote nightstone which i have a copy of this is a zebra book it was published in 1988 and this is about um a boy his mom was like savagely murdered and I don't know, by these little brown things, he said. And um, later he sees these little brown things again and I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, seems like there's some Native American stuff in this, which always makes me a little um, apprehensive about how it's going to be handled, but I guess we'll see. Next, I have Ghoul by Michael Slade. This was published in 1987. It is a signet book, and this is, I believe, the second book in the series. The first book was Headhunter, and I think I have the third book too, which is Cutthroat. I've never read any of them. The series is about, like, a murderer, and that's all I know, because I haven't read it, so I don't know. Okay, uh, I also picked up a copy of Black Magic by Whitley Strieber. I have no fucking idea what this is about. Um, the back of the book tells me little to nothing. I think maybe this has to do with some military experiment. That is a human? I have no idea, but no man or woman can resist him. I don't know what this is about at all. Um, I bought it because I know Whitley Strieber is kind of weird and I like the cover. It reminds me of a firework. I know it's supposed to be like a web, I think, but it reminds me of a firework. That's my hot take. Next, I have Spook by Steve Vance. This was published in 1989. This is about a strange child and she, there's like a new woman in town and she wants to like help this strange child that's kind of like ostracized and um, maybe something bad happens to her because she decides to help this child. I don't know. This I bought strictly because of the cover uh this like 
skull under a, a black light, I guess. I don't know. It's really freaky. Next, I have The Whipping Boy by Beth Holmes. This was published in 1978. I don't really know anything about this either. The cover is just so intriguing and I was super disappointed when I got this copy because the spine's all bowed, which is such a bummer. Like, I don't mind... I don't mind crack spines, that doesn't bother me so much as long as I can, you know, see the spine very well, but both spines really make me fucking sad. So, um, this is like about a boy who like might become a killer. I don't know. That it's dedicated to God. So that's kind of interesting. Um, especially in like a psychological suspense slash maybe horror book slash like a boy who seems like he might have like weird mommy problems. I don't know, I haven't read this, but I'm curious about that and how that's going to play out. So well thing. Okay, next we have The Fagin by Pat Graverson. This was published in 1982 and it is also a zebra book don't really know what this is about. Surprise, surprise. Um, it seems like there's like some satanic stuff, maybe a murder that someone experiences, um, maybe a child that is hurt or taken by a demon. I'm not really sure, but someday I will find out. Okay, next we have The Lake by R. Carl Largent. Uh, this was published in 1993 and it is a leisure book. So this is about like a weird like science experiment gone wrong, something like that. And this is created, this thing. And that is literally all I know. That's all the back tells me. And you know I don't like to go too far in depth with the synopsis because I like to not know what I'm reading. Next, we have Save the Last... Oh my god, Minnesota. We have Save the Last Dance for Me by Judy Miller. This was published in 1981, I think. Yes, 1981. This is a pocketbook fiction book. And it has a really great step back art right here. Um, this is such a great cover. This is about a dancer who has a stalker. And I know, I think this was in paperbacks from hell. And I feel like in there it was like, Maybe she's held captive or something by the stalker. And that's all I know about this. It's blurbed by V.C. Andrews. So I also picked up a copy of The Unholy Smile by Gregory A. Douglas. He also wrote The Nest, which I read a couple months ago. This was published in 1979 and it is a zebra horror book. The spine's a little chewed up here. Um, this is something about some sort of like ritualistic ceremonies where they kill people. I don't know who it is and I'm not sure who they're killing or why, but that's what I know about this book. Okay, this one I was super excited to find. This is Shock Rock and it's an anthology edited by Jeff Galb and it has a foreword by Alice Cooper. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, this was published in 1992, the year of our Lord, me. Um, this is a pocket horror book. And like I said, it's an anthology about, I don't know, music. It says Stephen King, David J. Shaw, Thomas Tessier, F. Paul Wilson, Richard Christian Matheson, Nancy A. Collins, Graham Masterton, Ray Garten, Rex Miller, and 10 other stars of today's shock fiction, which is funny because I would never say Stephen King is a shock fiction writer, but okay. Know what middleheads and moralists, punksters and preachers have known all along. Rock and roll with its hot licks and raw glitter has a dark side too, where the party stops and the terror begins. Put on your headphones, open this electrifying book. 
Rock to the world of horror, where martyred musical super legends return from the dead at 120 decibels, where radio stations sponsor ghastly giveaways that no living soul could want, where other earthly pirates bootleg not records, but human souls, where people are strange and the devil rocks all night. I am so psyched about this. Um, it seems absolutely fucking ridiculous and I need to get to it soon. Okay, last but not least is Brainchild by Andrew Niederman. This was published in 1981 and it is a pocket fiction book. It also has some cool step back art. I don't wanna, this is in really good shape so I don't want to crease the cover. Uh, this I believe was also featured in paperbacks from hell. And this is about a young girl named Lois who is very science-minded. And her family has come on some hard times and she kind of um, has the opportunity to like create a behavioral science experiment within her own, her own house. I'm very interested in this one. I really love the cover of it. I'm not really sure like why the bunnies are in a bird cage, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm really surprised I found it. It's really in really beautiful condition. So now I have to like read it like this so I don't crack the spine. <laughs> okay, anyways, that's all I have for you. These are the books I bought in August. Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave me a comment. Let me know if you've read any of these or you want to read them. Let me know if there's anything that you bought this month or borrowed from the library or any, any sort of book you acquired that you're really excited about right now because I'd love to hear about it. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys later.